the morning program. With Marriott Hartley, Rollin Smith, Bob Saget, and Mark McEwen. And here they are, Marriott and Rollin. We're really here. South Fork. We're really here. And this is really South Fork, and it's really Dallas. It's, and it's wonderful. Unbelievable. Isn't it? this, this is where the Ewings live and work and play and do all those sort of things. Mm -hmm. And we're here for the 250th episode. episode. Or the 10th year, almost the 10th year. I think year. that is really special. They yeah. really, and they, they're they very highly rated. This lovely. Hi. Hey, look, hi. Welcome to South Fork. Well, it's good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Zelly. You, can you sit and chat for a second? No, not right now. Oh. Maybe later. Okay. I'm going to go take a bike ride. Okay. okay. It's a good day, isn't it? Oh, no, it's I'm great. Glad you're here. Thanks, Thanks for your for hospitality. Us. Uh, it's great. Uh, she, uh, Do you know that? That's that was Miss Ellie, right? Oh, this really is exciting. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Uh, Just she, like I thought it would be. Yeah, she's a little shy. Uh, we may see her later on so? in the show. I think so. She doesn't stay in one place real long. Our yeah. first guest this morning has become an American folk hero. His portrayal of the nefarious J.R. Ewing has kind of given new meaning to the phrase ruthless people. But please, let's not confuse that sly and devious rascal J.R. with the fine actor who plays him, Larry Hagman. Welcome, Larry, to the morning program. Thank you. Glad to see you here. Thank you. And thanks for bringing us to South Fork. This is wonderful. Oh, it's so cool this time it's of year. You can't really, believe it. Yeah. It's really wonderful. Yeah. You know, Dallas is JR, and JR is Dallas. Oh. That's a lot of pressure to have on one person. Really? Don't you think? Yeah, not for the last 10 years, it's been real easy. Because <laughs> Dallas wouldn't be it without you. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I think the show would go on a long time after me. Uh, it's, really? It's, yeah, I really do. You have a very famous mom, uh, Mary Martin. Did, uh, in, did her career and the way she did it influence you in any way and what you're doing? Well, I worked with her once in, in South Pacific in London for about a year. <clears throat> but uh, South Pacific is still running, and I Do, I Do is still running, and Sound of Music is still running. Yeah. She's not in any of them, so, you know, Dallas will keep on going. I read there was a possibility at one time that, uh, that you might bring your mom on to play a, a guest part on. Uh, oh, I, I kind of thought about it, and I talked it over with her, but, you know, that's a little difficult sometimes, you know. Got a little wind out here in Texas. Yeah, I love it. This is so cool and nice. <laughs> Usually, we're shooting down here in June or July, and it's really hot. And this is so perfect, you know, except yeah. for that tornado. That's oh, that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Ewing deserves a lot of credit. She's a recovering alcoholic, and she continues to stand by the side of a husband who's had more affairs than the catering hall. I'm talking, of course, about J.R.'s wife and the actress who created the role, the beautiful, the vivacious, the wonderful, Linda Gray. She joins us now. Good morning, Linda. Thank you. Good morning. I'm glad you're here, and thanks again for having us all down here in South Park. Welcome to South Park. Oh, it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful place. Isn't it great? Yeah. You know, on the on the show, Dallas, you two have your, your little tiffs and spats. And, us? Uh, oh, yeah, just a touch. <laughs> you call that tiffs? You <laughs> <laughs> see what happens off stage. <laughs> Well, how about that offstage now? I'm told that offstage you guys are really good friends. Yeah. We're all the best. Good was buddies. it that way always from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. It, when I joined the show, you know, I was I was the uh, uh, the kind of late bloomer last kid on the block. You know, yeah. I didn't even have a name. Sue Ellen wasn't even named for the first couple of shows. And uh, everybody had done something magical and memorable before except me. So I just kind of hung in the background. But they brought me in, and uh, I was kind of the kid sister. And, Larry was incredibly wonderful and supportive and loving and funny, and uh, we had the best time. The miniseries was just incredible. The bonding that put us all together, and that's, that stayed the same. Does that take a while to happen, or is that chemistry just right there when you first meet, you first work with an, another actor? Well, with me, from speaking yeah. for myself yeah. only, it was there immediately with Larry. I was very intimidated because uh, I was working with Major Nelson, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, I had always been crazy about him, his acting, and and for me to see him create the role of J.R. almost before my eyes was incredible. And um, we did our first scene together as uh, Mr. and Mrs. J.R. Ewing mm -hmm. for CBS, and he wasn't crazy about it. And he told me so. And I was terribly intimidated for, oh, a day or two. <laughs> and then we got it together. So it was, it's been magical ever since. I love working with him, and right in front of him, he's the best actor I've ever worked with. He's, he's giving, he's really supportive, and um, a great friend. How do you plead, uh, <laughs> no, She's absolutely right. <laughs> See, no, I, knew. Okay, right. I am that. You wrote good, my that entire perfect. script. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You said it just like you got the prompter up there that I wrote for you. Yeah. Well, it's also for your good friends and uh, his efforts, too. I understand that's uh, led you to a new aspect of your career, and that's directing. Yes. 
He was very supportive because after uh, I'd been on the show for seven years, um, we, our contracts came up for renegotiation. And the only thing I really wanted was to direct. I'd always wanted to do that all my life. So I asked for that in my contract. And um, it sort of came down through various sources that um, we can't let her direct. Her was me. Yeah. And um, they, is so I was, and, uh, they is them and yeah. her was me. So uh, I, I was very upset because uh, I really wanted to do that and I didn't see why. Um, I couldn't. So Larry came to my rescue, and he really went in and fought for me lovingly as a friend, and he knew I could do it. That and, was uh, very you know, simple. Was... I just told him that she would do everything I told her to do, That's and she right. would it'd be perfect. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he no, she very... did a fantastic job. She really prepared for her first directorial assignment, and it is difficult to, for a woman to go in. There is no kidding. There is a difference. Uh, the men sometimes don't like it, but. We had had a crew for a long time, and they all loved her, and they all gave her more support than uh, than they ever gave me. That's for oh, damn no, sure. they didn't. No, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> and and their first job, it rained. It was supposed to be outside, and they and it rained like crazy. And then we had to come inside. Yeah. She probably had the most difficult assignment that anybody had ever had. I yeah, had police dogs true. and deaths and gurneys oh, and yeah. coroners and photographers. I mean, it was crazy. But I'd gone to school. I went to UCLA Saturday mornings and studied with women in film um, on Sundays. So Just I was prepared. Quick, quickly, though, was it harder to work as a director with uh, Larry, or is it easier to work with him as an actress? Um, well, you have different eyes. You know, uh -huh. when I'm working um, with Larry as an actor, you know, there's a different connection. Right. As a director, you're over here looking in. On a scene, and uh, well, we so wouldn't have just, scenes together. It doesn't different. make any difference. Did it's it? Just, no, no, but it was different. It was different for me. You know, you just look at it. As you know, yeah. most That's of you know, Patrick Duffy plays Miss Ellie's good son and Jr.'s righteous brother Bobby, and he's with us this morning. Good morning. Oh, <laughs> so sick of that good guy image. No, I'm not. But, good but morning. You're not always this violent. Uh, no, no, no. Well, morning is not my good time. Yes. It isn't. Oh yeah. No, I'm great in the morning. Are you? Yeah, you want to call my wife or something? Or? <laughs> Do I yes. have to ask questions? Huh? No, no, I come with all my answers already prepared. But really? No. Okay. Yes. Now you you were in Dallas for like seven years, right? And yeah. then you left. Right. And then. Is this a quiz or something? Or no? <laughs> Let's see if you can get it okay. right. Okay. And, then and if you... a train leaves Chicago, it's <laughs> no, traveling on, 100 on. miles an hour. <laughs> when no, did you return? Okay. And then you came back after a year. What was it like to come back? It was it like you'd never left? Well, I, I actually was on that year that I was off. I made about the last eight seconds of the of the year, so I actually have been on every season of Dallas. But that much, one of them. But I made it. I, the, the year I was off was great fun. What were you, what, what were you doing that year? You were in the midst of she, you, watching all those other actors of, work. No, you no, were working. No, I was working. I was having fun, uh, trying to get other things started. Uh, you know, like businesses and things. One of which we were going to talk about, but it's in the toilet now, so we, we can't to, talk about the construction. No, company. the construction okay. company. I Just, I hauled it away with the trucks that were a bad investment. So. Yeah. But you were also acting, you played a psychopath? I, I did some things that I didn't, obviously, for seven years have a chance to do. You know, play c character parts as opposed to the kind of person that I play now. That was fun. Uh, I went to England for two months, which I never traveled very much uh, my whole life, let alone the seven years on the show because mm -hmm. of the schedule. So mm -hmm. that was fun. Um, and then it worked out perfectly to return when I did. Okay, now wait a minute, because th th I have a quote here. When you announced your departure from the show, yep. right, you said, Bobby <laughs> is gone and is gonna, can never come back. I appreciate my public and would never fool them. How then did you... But I will lie to them. <laughs> Once oh. in a while, if I'm forced oh. into it, right? Yeah, well, I... How did you reconcile that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No. I was obviously quite intoxicated when I said that. <laughs> no, I've, I've learned one thing from that. Uh, I have learned one thing that is that I will emphatically never say anything emphatically. You mean never anymore. say never? Huh? Never say never. I absolutely believe that a thousand percent. And because I, and I, the way that we shot it, I actually died. And there was no consideration on the part of Leonard Katzman, the producer, and myself, anybody to come back. Oh. And then the timing was just right to come back. And we thought, like, well, did you have any idea that your character was going to take off the way it took off? That it was going to be so successful? That it was going to really make so much of Dallas? Uh, well, I mean, uh, we make, in terms of characters, a, 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 
truly as an ensemble, Dallas. And I think that's proven is that, it, you know, we need all of us. It's not, you know, it's, it's the chemistry of everything that's going. And it's like a recipe. And you remove one element, you still have the basic thing, but it's not quite the same. And I think people really want it to be the same. And that includes not just the actors, but, you know, Leonard was gone that same year. Oh. That, that I was gone and that's two elements of the recipe that was not quite making the finished product the way that people wanted it to be so you know if any single element and now with Victoria being gone that's an, that's an element that's missing what's gonna happen with that um, what are you gonna do you're gonna go I'm going to party. Oh, no, I mean, first I'm going to mourn a proper of amount of course, time. Of course, eh, That time's up. <laughs> now I'm going to party. Uh, no, I, 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 no, I'm actually going, going to do? You I'm actually going to miss Victoria. It's, it's, it was a lot of fun to work with her, and we worked together so much, you know, in terms of our characters always being together. And now it's like having to train somebody new. I mean, in terms of whoever will be that opposite character for me. It's so you don't think you're going to go back to Priscilla Presley's character? No, she's playing it so well now I'm going to let her continue with that character and I'm... Uh, Jeez, from boom. You, oh, I, from boom. See, I wish I had my toy. Now, people I don't a, see that, but people don't see this side of you, right? I mean, you really People are, also don't see this <laughs> side of me. Very <laughs> much. But, but, but you're called Dudley Do-Right, right? Some people well, call I'm you called do. Goody Two-Shoes and, you know, yeah. my theme song is... <laughs> <laughs> and J.R. stabs me. So, but I even have my belt buckle that says oh, PGD. I thought you were going to show me your tattoo. I just just gave me a start there. Did you? Yeah. Then tell me, if you had a fantasy, now no restrictions. Okay. Be to show you my tattoo. Really? Yeah. Me? Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's the entire battle of Bull Run. Shall I do my pig huh? in your ear? <laughs> what? Shall I do my pig in your ear? Oh, you, come here, I'll you, show you. Do you have a pig in the ear? Now will you show me your tattoo? No, no, it's okay. Anyway, if you had a fantasy, a real fantasy... You hold down a, a, a <laughs> national television show anything, and do pig in anything the Anything that, that your character could do that, of course, Mr. Katzman wouldn't let you do, what would it be? I'd like to run naked through all the girls that have played Jenna Wade on this show. Oh, it's just on the, I've had three Jenna Wades, you know. You've had yeah. three Jenna Wades? Yeah. What were the other two of the well, other two? Huh? Well, we started out with uh, Morgan Fairchild, was the original Jenna Wade. You went through Morgan Fairchild. Well, no, that's a fantasy. I oh, said, oh. I didn't. Oh, I see. And what was the second And the one? second uh, lady's name was Francine Tacker. Uh -huh. And now Priscilla is Jenna. Wow. And save the best Listen, for Listen, I went through all the Bonanza Boys. I mean, why naked? can't you? No, that was not my fantasy. Oh, I, I actually see. went, went uh, through the whole family. Did you really? Uh -huh. In the uh, acting with them, playing their uh -huh. husbands, lovers? Husbands, wives, then always got killed off. Jenna Wade is the other woman in Bobby Ewing's life. Now, she's currently pregnant. Uh, hang in there with me if you can. Currently pregnant with his child, and if things weren't complicated enough, she's living with Bobby's half-brother. Now, since she knows Jenna better than anyone else, we're going to talk to Priscilla Presley about all of this. And she says she gets just as mixed up as everybody. <laughs> Good morning, Priscilla. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, you are involved with Bobby's half-brother. Right. No. Ray Krebs. Ray Krebs. Right. That's a great name. <laughs> Do you think this is real love or was this rebound kind of romance? Oh, I don't know. I think two of them having going through their problems that um, uh, maybe in the beginning it was, but I think they have a very interesting uh, relationship because it's probably one of the best as far as in a relationship they started out as friends first and I think that's real important you know it, you don't think that at first but eventually it goes into you know a, a real care for one another he's a very honest man and it's something that that Jenna is always attracted to I feel but it's starting out first as friends and then going into the the love the actual love for one another now uh, Victoria Principal is leaving pretty soon, right? right. She plays Pam. Right. What's going to happen to your relationship then? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to wait. <laughs> oh, I know. I hate that kind of thing. I know. I know. But, well, they keep it a secret from us too. Now, do they? Yes. Because I remember absolutely. when I did Peyton Place, they never told us. No, they don't. They don't with us either. So we're just as surprised. I mean, each week we get the script and we're looking in to see exactly, you know, what's happening. Any surprises? You don't know anything yet, okay? Not really. No. No. <laughs> now, in real life. Um, you're very interesting. You have a, uh, I've been reading about you, and you seem to have a lovely relationship with your daughter. Yes, uh, Lisa. That you had when you were quite young. Right. Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie, that's right. And now you have a little baby. I have a son, two months old, and uh, he's, his name is Navarre. His nickname is Navarre. His real name is Navarone, his whole name. 
Another one, Anthony. Now, one of the things that I, I got is that it's difficult to, to raise someone like Lisa Marie in a fishbowl like that, that you really did protect her, mm -hmm. didn't you, from publicity. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do it with your little baby? Probably the same way. I feel I'm, I'm, I was adamant on her having her childhood, living a very normal childhood, and being able to experience everything that a, a child who is not in the limelight have. And she's been very appreciative of it. It's up to her, it's her choice, but she, she wants to remain, you know, um, more or less um, out of the limelight. And she enjoys that. She feels that she has the freedom of being an individual and the individual that she wants to be right now. Are you freer, do you think, with your little son, Navarre? No, or I'm just as protective. Really? Yeah. I'm... No, but I mean in the relationship. Oh, you mean as the closeness? Uh-huh. I, it's funny, I, I'm very close with my daughter, but with my son, it seems, uh, um, uh, I don't know, the second time around, I don't know if it's because I'm older, I appreciate a lot more, I'm uh, uh, much more patient. You know, when you're younger, you, you're, you're, you're young and you don't, you don't really know what you're doing. You know, you have a life that you haven't even led yet. You don't have the experience or the time. You're always thinking about who you are, what you are, you know, what the next day is going to bring and how you're going to cope with everything. And, and now it's, it's a lot different. I'm much more relaxed. I'm enjoying motherhood to the fullest. Well, you look beautiful, Thank but you. you're beautiful anyway. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome oh. to the morning program. Thank you. Good morning. morning. Is it possible, after seeing all of those, uh, those old scenes, is it possible to pick a special episode of Dallas? I would, I would suppose for, there are different shows for a variety of mm. reasons. Special episode would had to have been the fourth episode of the third season, which was discovering who shot J.R., uh -huh. because that was the, at that time, the highest rated show that had ever been on television, and it really made Dallas the kind of international hit that it stayed for a while. I understand that, that you had kind of a mixed feeling on the on having this uh, Who Shot JR episode. Well, what happened is we started the cliffhanger on, yeah. on nighttime television. And once you had done that, it was kind of like Columbus trying to find something besides America the next time out. Once you've shot JR and ended with a cliffhanger, what do you do after mm. that? And yet every year you've got to come up with something. And um, the next one that really, really worked was, of course, the last scene that we saw, Patrick Duffy in the shower. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you keep people hanging every season, we and try. you're building up to something this season, too, which I want to get to in just a moment. But, uh, you know, Dallas is seen in, I guess, 98 countries. Mm -hmm. why, why the popularity there? That's everybody likes misery, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wish there were a, a, a way to explain it. It's, it's in countries that, where people do not speak English, where they, I don't think, understand our customs. Um, I can't really understand why uh, it's the international phenomenon that it is, but I'm not complaining about it. Is it kind of strange to see what you've created in English appear in different languages? It's, it's unusual. I've seen it in, in French and, yeah. uh, and German, and uh, it does feel a little bit different. Yeah. You know, you had J.R. shot, and you, you got a, not a cliffhanger, you got a practical problem now. You have Victoria Principal leaving the show. That's now, true. Uh, what's, uh, you know, how will Bobby survive? Well. I mean, not Bobby, but uh, this whole character. Uh, well, we know that Victoria is leaving the show. We're not absolutely certain that Pam Ewing is uh, leaving the show. Ah, uh, um, no, that's a piece well, of information we didn't know until Well, we're, until now. we're still playing with that, of course. We have uh, our year coming up now, and um, while Victoria is leaving and may not come back. Uh, the decision as to whether or not Pam will leave hasn't quite been made yet. Will we see you here in your 20th? I hope so. Thank you. Leonard Katzman, executive producer of Dallas, thanks for having us at The illegitimate son of the late Jock Ewing and the half-brother of J.R. and Bobby, and his marriage to Donna ended in divorce just as she was about to have their first child. But you can't keep a good man down. Ray's keeping it all in the family as uh, he finds comfort in the arms of Bobby's ex-girlfriend. Getting all this straight? Off-camera, life is a lot simpler and happier for Steve Canale, and he's with us this morning. Hello. How are you? Thank Did goodness. I get that right? Thank All that goodness. right? It's a lot simpler than this television series. <laughs> it's much cleaner than all of that. Now, what is going to happen to you and, and Jenna? What do you think is going to happen now that Pam is leaving? Well, the way I've always played it is Ray and Jenna were like 
20 year or older friends and she's really a girl from the neighborhood and and the relationship just starts off as friends and uh, develops very slowly and uh, out of a situation that's more need than anything else and uh, I can say that in the coming season I I probably will propose to her but I don't know what that will lead to now I miss Donna do, do yeah. other people miss yes, Donna? Yes, they do. Do you? Susie, yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, Susan Howard uh, played Donna for seven years on our show, and uh, Ray and Donna were married most of that time. And it was really uh, a couple that at times was referred to as uh, America's couple and sort of uh, the middle class group that represented more of the everyday person in the country. and and in all the other countries that we're broadcast to. And I want to get to your belt, belt buckle because it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> My belt buckle. Yeah, yeah, Thank let's you. just get all to right, it. It okay. is so gorgeous. Look at this belt buckle. Can we see this now? Mary, what camera should we This was this, this was designed by the Edward H. Boland Company uh, for a ski event that bears my name, I'm flattered to say, that benefits the March of Dimes. We're in our fifth year now. This says Ski 3, but it's the Steve Canaley Invitational Celebrity Ski Classic. And it's something that I developed in the Southern California area to, as I say, uh, benefit the March of Dimes. It brings the film industry and the Southern California skiers and uh, people that work for the March of Dimes together once a year. Now, where is this? In Wrightwood, California, oh, uh, usually right, in February. So beautiful. People don't realize that uh, just an hour or so from Los Angeles, we have mountains that you can ski in that are snow covered many times during the year. It's the best. That's where I grew up, and I like to try and do something for that brother, industry And if there. he had a middle name, you'd call him Cliff. I'll get JR if it's the last thing I do, Barnes. <laughs> of course, I'm referring to Ken Kirchival, and good morning, Ken. Glad, glad you're here, and thanks for inviting us to South Fork. Good morning. Glad Listen, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, with uh, Victoria Principal leaving the show, uh, who are you going to complain about now about JR? You know, I, that was a concern of mine. And I, cause I, I about 90% of my work was with Victoria. And, yeah. and for all of the, the, the ongoing battle between JR and myself, I mean, we've had seasons where maybe I've been face to face with him three times. The, the feud goes on, but I really deal with it here and he deals with mm -hmm. it here. And most of my dealing with it has been with Pam, you know? So I was real concerned about that, and I asked about that. But Cliff's got a, a great storyline. I mean, just a super storyline coming up, so I'm excited about that. Is there anything you can give us no, a little, tiny little no, hint no, for not, next not season? Even, Nothing at not all? Not even a clue. All right, let's get to you personally here for just a moment. You come from a family of doctors. Yep. And an uncle a doctor, your father was a doctor, yep. your grandfather, grandfather was a doctor. Yep, my mom's a nurse. Did you yep. ever think of my going mom. into medicine? My mom, where's mom? Mom's, mom? mom's probably right over there. Yeah. Did you ever think about going into medicine? I tried. I made, a, I made an attempt. I used to uh, work as an orderly in surgery and in, uh, down at uh, Union Hospital in Terre Haute and in x-ray and on the floors. I used to go down and assist my dad. Seriously, this like, is like a scrub nurse. Or? Yeah, this is before the days of, of malpractice suits uh -huh. and all that. But a doctor used to be able to either have an assistant, have a surgery supervisor, whoever he wanted. And I used to literally go down and scrub with him, and we would do an appendix or something like that. I really tried to generate some kind wow. of enthusiasm for medicine, but I I didn't. I went, and then it got to the point. My dad used to close up his office back in Clinton, Indiana, and drive to New York to see me open in my New York shows. So I think it all worked out well. You did a lot of New York shows, speaking yeah. of that. I mean, yeah. a lot of them were musicals. Yeah, they were. No, but I, I don't see you singing on Dallas. No, they just, you know, I don't know. I don't know if Dallas is ready for it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that ever might happen? Could, no. could the character ever sing? <laughs> no, I mean, Cliff. <laughs> Swings out there yeah. pretty far sometimes, but I don't think so. This man has starred in such classic movie musicals as Showboat, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, oh, Kiss Me Kate, and a whole new generation of fans know him as Miss Ellie's second husband, Clayton Farlow. The name on the marquee is Howard Keel, and he's here to join with us now. Hello, Hi. Howard. Yeah. Hi. It's good to see you. Now, what time are you on now? You've just gotten back from Italy. Yes, yes, I got up about... Um... 5.30 this morning, got the little plane to Milano, flew into Frankfurt, I uh, got in at about 9.30, got another plane at 10, and flew, got, about, got here about 1.30 this afternoon, so I'm, I'm fine. Now, you've asked me if I take catnaps. Do you, you take catnaps? You've learned to. how to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah sure, sure. Yeah, in this business, you have to. Now, what were you yeah. doing in Milano? I went over there. They've uh, given Miss Ellie and I an award. 
that is comparable to the uh, Emmy Award here in this country. And uh, so they, they said, why don't you fly to Italy and pick it up and we'll give you a vacation there. And uh, so uh, I thought, well, we can squeeze it. It was kind of quick, but it was very nice. And um, I'd never been to Italy, so I always wanted to go, so we went. That's great. Now, you're enjoying this, aren't you? You're oh, such yeah. a wonderful musical actor. And you're really an actor. Do you, do you, which do you prefer? Do you have a preference? Well, you know, if, if you're a singer, um, you can find a, a great part that also you can also sing. That, that is, is my preference. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, they're hard to find, mm -hmm. very difficult to come by. I've never found a part that I ever originated in my whole career. Uh, I have played many wonderful parts, but um, I also enjoy acting. I think some of my best theater has been in acting, straight acting, actually. I did uh, Sunrise at Campobello for a while and opened a lot of eyes with that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been, to be on, on Dallas with, with these great professionals, and they're, they're great fun, and I really enjoy it. Oh, when you and I saw one another last, was it a benefit? We were both singing, and you had mentioned that you were doing concerts uh, in Europe, mm -hmm. and we're singing "Send in," was singing "Send in the Clowns." That's I right. remember that. Yeah. For a man to sing that One was unusual. Oh, it's a great and you great just song. you've been selling records like crazy over there. Yeah, I finally made my first album at, when I was 63 years old. My gosh! You know? And it's a it's a gold. I mean, you're you're up against people like Michael Jackson. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel great. Gosh. Actually, to uh, well, it's, it's nostalgia and nostalgia and all really beautiful music, if treated in, in gentle hands, I think still has a, a place in, in the world today. Now, it's being sold here. What is the name of it? Uh, I have a new one coming out now. It'll be called Reminiscing, which will be on the uh, Silver Eagle Records. And uh, the other one was called uh, Howard Keel with Love. And uh, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. That's right. See? Right. Yes. Yes. That's I couldn't great. remember. But just a quick technical question to ask you. It's so terrific. You do. You film the exteriors of South Fork here, but do you film the interiors no, here too? No. Not at the house. No. We film that in uh, Culver City at MGM Studios. Thank you so much. My old stomping ground. Fun being here. Thank uh, you. Good Rowan, there, yeah. Right. Oh, uh, we have a surprise. Oh, did you know that no. for everybody and all you folks that invited us down here in South Fork. Yes. Come on with me. Come on over here. Come on in, everybody. Oh, okay. Howard, oh, oh. Barbara. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Come on. <laughs> Larry, just been waiting for this as well. Oh, Mark, Bob, where are you? Oh, look at this. But I got a microphone. Happy 250th right from the morning program. Mm. Oh, 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 that's great. Happy 10th. Well, who's going to cut it? Well, Somebody has to cut it. Miss Ellie, oh, you're going to cut it. Larry and Barbara. Okay, Larry. Everybody put their hands on it. All right. You got that? Larry, get your hand in there. Look at that. Here. I got it. Okay. <laughs> to ten more. Here's to ten, ten more. more. Ten ten more. Ten more. Ten ten more. That's you guys. Nice to see you. One more. One more. Hang around. Come out here. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. The man responsible for all of this. This is good morning. Nikki, <laughs> you can last 10, 10 years more, energy-wise, you think? 500 is a nice even figure. Yeah, 500. <laughs> i tell you what, we'll be back. We'll be back. Join us Monday. We'll have a first part of a special series about middle-aged women who've lost their husbands to younger women. <laughs> Moreno, comedian Richard okay, Lewis, and consumer advocate Ralph Nader, yeah. and the new Playmate of the Year. How about that? Ralph Nader is the new Playmate of the Year. No. Oh. See you Monday. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Bye.